Now, props and locks on Fox 32 Chicago, presented by Bet River Sportsbook. Good Sunday morning and welcome to Props and Locks. I'm Caitlin Sharkey. Week 8 of the NFL football season is upon us and we are here to break down the best bets and odds of the biggest games of the week courtesy of Bet River Sportsbook. Joining me every Sunday morning, VEASAN expert Danny Burke. Danny, let's start with the Bears and Saints at Soldier Field. Bears catching four at home. Saints have won five in a row against Chicago but have covered the spread just twice in six games this season. Allen Robinson is cleared to play for the Bears. Michael Thomas, however, will not play for the Saints. Danny, first thoughts about this one. Yeah, Caitlin, and this is really tricky because this is kind of a fade the Bears scenario for what a lot of the public is thinking. I mean, they're coming off a really bad game against the Rams, especially offensively. Now, in terms of the total, this one opened at 47. You've seen that drop to 43. We know bear weather is upon us. The wind is going to be crazy. It's going to be a little bit frigid out there. We're going to see that in a lot of games, but specifically this one as well. So the biggest question for me is, can the Bears improve offensively? And I'm not too convinced convinced on that in DVOA they rank in the bottom tier for offense Saints are on the complete top tier so it goes opposite ways offensively and defensively we know that's where the Bears thrive but can the Saints do well defensively too well they rank 10th on DVOA defense so not too shabby of a defense for New Orleans coming into the game and with that win going to be a big fact uh, big factor who knows even how much these teams can pass the ball so who's got a better ground game give the favor to New Orleans here so now that the line it went up to as high as about four and a half even five it's back at four I would lean that direction a little bit but I'm kind of looking at a different angle I think you can look at the first half total 20 and a half so just complete total for the first half I think, you can, I think you can look under 20 and a half in that spot because the Saints, yes, they've gone over that in every single game thus far, but you add in the weather, you add in the Bears' inability to move the ball offensively, and you add in how good they are defensively. I think this is going to be a slower paced game with a lot of action on the ground. I think first half total under 20 and a half could be the play because, look, the Bears are only getting about 9.4 first half points per game and only allowing 10 points in the first half per game. So I think it could be a lower scoring affair. And Speaking of that ground game, let's look at a prop bet for this week eight matchup and it spotlights Saints star running back Alvin Kamara over 58 and a half rushing yards. Bears run defense allowing 4.3 yards per carry. Two running backs have rushed for 100 plus yards against the Bears this season. Do you like the over here with this prop, Danny? Yeah, I actually found this one pretty interesting. Kamara, 58 and a half rushing yards today. Basically what I just said. I mean, the ground game needs to be implemented in this spot because of the weather. And Kamara's really had a solid season thus far. The only concern is if Murray takes some of that workload in the backfield. But look, Kamara's averaging 61 rushing yards per game. He's gotten over this prop mark in about half of the game so far. And one of them he didn't get is because he got 58. So he just missed it by a yard. And this Bears defense, while it's very sound and solid, the one part Part of that defense that has struggled is the run defense. So I think Kamara could certainly go over that 58 and a half rushing yard prop. And you were talking a little bit about the team total. When you're looking at this matchup and you kind of alluded to it with the weather, when you think weather plays a factor, do you shy on the side of going with the under when it comes to point totals? Yeah, 100%, Caitlin. And a lot of people, when they look at the weather, they get kind of scared when you see snow or rain. But really, the big factor is the wind. Now, it looks like in a lot of these games, the Bears being one of them, some winds can get up to over 20 miles per hour. And naturally, that's going to affect the passing game, the kicking game, so many different things. So don't be too scared if you see it with the rain or the snow. We saw it last weekend with the snow in Kansas City against Denver. And Kansas City almost got over the total themselves. So that's not really as big of an issue as it is typically with the wind and there are so many scenarios of that today so be sure to check those out before you place your wagers and speaking of wind it'll be windy in Green Bay moving on to an NFC North battle the Vikings and Packers Green Bay at home and a six-point favorite no Aaron Jones again this week for Green Bay but Minnesota has Dalvin Cook and the Packers not typically great against the run Danny what's your lean here I'm looking at the Packers side here, but I'm not looking at it for the full game. Now, if you are considering the full game, we always talk about it on the show, teaser opportunities. The Packers are probably going to be on everybody in their grandma's teaser this weekend because they're in kind of that perfect spot of if you tease them down either six, six and a half, depending on where you get the line at, all you need them to do is win. So you would pair that with another team and then you'd be looking pretty good. However, like I said, I'm looking at the first half angle here. Now, the weather isn't going to be too good at Lambeau either, but I think the Packers 
Packers team total first half over 13 and a half could be a good play. This Green Bay team in that week one performance against Minnesota put up 22 points in that first half. And if you look at how they've done it throughout the course of the season, they're averaging 17 points per game in the first half thus far. Vikings on the other side, they're allowing opponents about 12 points per game in the first half, so not terrible, but in terms of relatively key numbers with total, you're getting under the two touchdowns. I certainly think the Packers can at least get two touchdowns in that first half, because this Minnesota defense certainly isn't the same that we're accustomed to seeing in seasons past, and they've really gotten off the slow starts. You mentioned Aaron Jones. That was supposed to be the issue last week, right? And that line moved from three and a half down to three. Here on the show, we jumped all over that, and the Packers cruised to a nice win over the Texans. I think the same thing is going to be fine. Jamal Williams will suffice in that role. I think the Packers offense will continue to cruise, so I like Green Bay first half team total over 13 and a half. What do you think about Packers just money line, Danny? Well, the issue here with the money line is you don't necessarily want to lay that much on the price. So when it's as high as about six, six and a half, you look more toward the spread and it's under the key number of seven. So yes, if you want to back the Packers, now's the time to do it, hoping it doesn't move up to seven around game time. But a lot of the sharp money originally came in on Minnesota catching seven. And remember, the Vikings are coming off uh, a bye week here and it is a division game. So as hot as the Packers have been, this could be a decent opportunity for Minnesota. But that's why in terms of if you're looking at the full game I would elect to tease down the Packers by either six or six and a half points so all you need them to do is win you pair that with another team and that'll get you going pretty good all right sounds good still more to come on props and locks more of Burke's best bets as we continue with a look at some other week eight action and remember you can always place your bets at betrivers.com or using the bet rivers mobile app we're back after this Props presented by bet rivers sportsbook and welcome back to Props and Locks. I'm Caitlin Sharkey, joined by VEASAN expert Danny Burke. Danny, let's continue with our slate of Week 8 games. We have the Lions and Colts. The Colts laying three against Detroit. Total at 49 and a half. Lions have won two in a row, but not yet at home. Colts coming off a bye, and he boasts the league's number two defense and yards allowed. I got to go with Phillip Rivers and company for this one, Danny. I'm with you here, Kaylin, and it's tough because I've kind of been bashing old man Rivers throughout the season <laughs> because he can't really trust him so far, and it's obviously his inability to move the ball is concerning when you back him, but the Colts are coming off a bye here, which is a point I don't think a lot of people are making, so it's a little bit shocking, in my opinion, that this number has been steady at three throughout the course of the week, assuming that the sharp buyback would be on Detroit if it got to three and a half, so that makes sense, I guess, but look, this Detroit team, we've talked about this as well, Caitlin. They have all the skill there, at least offensively. It's just they can't really put it together for all four quarters. So that's what's a little bit concerning with this Detroit team. Originally, I looked at taking the three with Detroit. Would even recommend teasing them up as a home dog here. And we talked about teasing down the Packers. You could do an NFC North teaser, tease down the Packers, tease up the Lions. But with this number at three, if I'm just looking at the spread, I do give the edge to Phillip Rivers and the Colts because it comes down to defense. The Colts are certainly superior in that category. The Lions have been lackluster on that side of the ball. So I think that does give the advantage to Indianapolis along with coming off the bye week. And it is still kind of hard to trust the Lions. I know they've won the past couple games, but I think you give the edge to the Colts coming off the bye week. All right, next up, another huge game for the Steelers going to head-to-head -to -head with the Ravens. Pittsburgh still undefeated, but Baltimore favored by four in this one. Winner gets first place in the AFC North. Two top scoring offenses here. Danny over under at 46. Your thoughts? Yeah, so this one opened up with Baltimore's a five and a half point favorite. Now we've seen it go down from either four to four and a half. Like you alluded to, it's currently at four in favor of Baltimore. Another scenario where the bye week is going to play a factor. Now the Steelers on the other side, they're coming off a tough battle against Tennessee. They do escape with the win as the dog, and they'll be the dog once again in this spot. And Harbaugh with the Ravens has historically done well against the spread. Uh, coming off a of bye week and I think that could be this uh, the same play here because you're laying four and yes you don't get it at that three number which is kind of unfortunate and I, I wouldn't recommend buying it down but I would look the way of leaning the four with Baltimore their offense has been a little bit slow out of the gate but their defense has been incredible both of these teams are neck and neck when it comes to offense and defense so when it kind of evens out I think you give the advantage to the home team coming off of the bye Lamar Jackson getting an extra week to rest that knee more scheming coming up 
up with Harbaugh. I like the Ravens laying four in this spot, Kate. All right, back in the NFC, 49ers and Seahawks. Seattle laying three at home, coming off their overtime loss to the Cardinals, dealing with a number of injuries. Niners continuing to find ways to win. Seahawks also pretty banged up. Chris Carson and Jamal Adams questionable. I don't trust the Seattle defense. I like Kyle Shanahan. I'm taking San Francisco with the points here, Danny. All right, looks like we'll be buttoning the heads here, Caitlin, <laughs> because I'm going with Seattle. Now, this line has been pretty much at three for most of the week. It did drop down to two and a half very briefly at Bat Rivers, I believe, on Thursday. And I actually laid the two and a half then, would still lay the three now with Seattle being at that key number. But you brought up a huge point that Seattle defense is so bad and so hard to trust. But you look at the other side with the 49ers, they're kind of the darling team right now, getting a primetime win against the Rams and then another huge win against Cam Newton and the Patriots. So everybody's going to be looking at this line thinking, how are the 49ers catching three? And the Seahawks just lost to the Cardinals, who we're still not too convinced on. Don't be fooled by that. I think laying the three with Seattle and Russell Wilson will be a good bet here. They're still going to be able to move the ball. Don't know how much I trust this 49ers team still just yet. And I know I can trust MVP Russ. So I like laying the three with Seattle. All right. And to wrap up quickly, the three and three Raiders headed to Cleveland to face the Browns first game without Odell Beckham Jr. They are favored by one and a half total at 48. A tricky spread in this one, Danny. Originally, I like the total here, but the wind is going to play a factor. So instead of playing the total, I like the Browns money line minus 125. The run game is what's going to prove to be the deciding factor against this terrible Raiders defense, Caitlin. All right. Thank you, Danny. And thank you for joining us on Props and Locks. Make sure you join us every Sunday at 10 a.m. Make sure you place those bets at BetRivers.com. Fox kickoff Sunday is next.